Welcome to Beyond the Pulpit. My name is Andrew Ashley, and today I have a very special guest, a really cool individual, cool friend, um, Dr. Heather Thompson Day, who is an author and also a professor um, at Andrews University, a communications professor. What counsel have you given to a lot of your students regarding abstaining from sex, even in a dating relationship, and setting up those boundaries to make sure you're not falling into temptation? Yeah, a couple things, and I had a professor say this once to me that totally changed the way I saw sex before marriage if we were in an intimate dating relationship. Um, he said, if it's God is timeless, right? And God says, do not commit adultery. And if it is not your wife, whose wife is she? And he said for him, it was always very important that as a man of God, he would be able to take his ex-girlfriend to whoever her husband is later, right? And say, I kept her for you. Hmm. Like by God as my witness, I made sure that I knew she wasn't my wife, so I knew she was somebody's. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't cross that line, which I always mm -hmm. thought is really beautiful. Hmm. You, you have to understand that you're not just protecting yourself and your own heart, you're yeah. protecting the heart of your partners later. And I think... I think a lot of that falls on men um, because I, I, I'm not saying in all situations, but I think a lot mm -hmm. of times as, as a female who's dated, I had, I mean, you always are dealing with men trying to go too far and it's difficult. And I, here's, this is when I knew I was going to marry my husband. Yeah. This is what I knew is he said to me, I don't want to have sex with you and not because I don't want to, but because I genuinely believe that God has a plan for you. And I don't want sin to enter your life through me that would ever hinder him from doing whatever he's trying to do with you right now. Yeah. And that was like, whoa. It was like this moment where I was like, this man respects me as a child of God, not just as his girlfriend. As a child of God, he sees me that way. Yeah. And it yeah. was powerful. And so I think we're actually going to talk about this at my Vespers um, on Friday, how far is too far. Um, I yeah. think, can you t touch on that? Because like, what are the boundaries, you know, first base, second base, like what should people yeah, be keeping and I, in this mind is the for thing, that? Like, this is, I think I've become really liberal in my Christianity and, and, and in this particular conversation, I've become very conservative. Mm -hmm. um, just because I've seen the aftermath of what happens when people make poor choices. I've, I have conversations with friends. I, I know what struggles that brings into a marriage. This mm -hmm. unnecessary stress that didn't have to be there had you both just waited. I think, again, anything that you cannot do knowing that you are still in favor with God, you probably should not do. Yeah. So you answer that, let every man be held accountable to God for himself and woman yeah. for what we do that we cannot, that we know we are still in the favor of God. I, I highly recommend not dating in high school. And the reason for this is simply because of proximity. We, proximity says I make my decisions as to who I find attractive and who is good for me based on what's available to me at that moment. And in high school, especially if we're going to like a private academy or something, like there's just not that many students. So you're saying, I love this person. I want to date them. We're going to get married. But really, they're just your best option out of the 50 kids in your class. And then maybe only half of them are the gender that you're attracted to, right? So there's 25 dudes there. And you're going to say, this is the one because, but really you're only doing that out of that 25. So I highly recommend waiting until you are in a, a a populated area where you can see what you actually want out of a relationship. I believe in dating. I don't like the idea of courtship. I believe in dating lots of different people and under. Okay. Yeah. So you you are because there's a lot of people who would say dating is exclusive. I there's know. No, you're not dating unless you're just well, maybe dating it's that semantics. one person. Maybe we're just talking about words. It could be. So you but you you think it's okay to just go on several different dates and just make it casual and. I think you should. You think you should. Okay. I like that. I think I think that's really healthy as well. Um, do you? And so I wonder, what are your thoughts? Like, what is the definition of cheating? Because, um, well, firstly, have you ever been cheated on? Not that I know of. Have you ever cheated on, on someone else, to your knowledge? <laughs> Okay, we don't want to go there. Okay, okay. We're going to go there. <laughs> Never my husband or even him when he was my boyfriend. Okay, but other people. Other people, because okay. I was making decisions based on proximity. And the second I got to a more populated proximity, mm. I said, oh, I don't actually love this person. They were just my best option at that time. And now I have all these other options. 
Steve I'll have to Harvey check it out. says um, that guys show love in three ways, and he calls them the three P's. They profess, they provide, and they protect. What that means is if a guy loves you, he will tell anybody if he loves you that he loves you. Mm. If a guy is introducing you as his friend, hmm. there's a problem. He yeah. will profess if he's in love. He will provide wherever his money level is at. He will do the best he can for you with that money. One of the biggest things that irritates me is when girls say to me, um, oh, we, he wants to marry me. He just, he can't afford a ring. Because my husband worked like 60 hours a mm -hmm. week making $10 an hour to buy me a ring from Sears that I still wear and I treasure with all my heart because he sweat mm -hmm. over it and it was from him, right? He did the best he could for me with his little $10 an hour that he could. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a ring from Sears and I still rock it, right? Yeah. He will provide. And the last one, he will protect. Can't nobody say something crazy about you when he is around. Yeah. He will lose his cool and you can't come home and say, somebody was talking about me at work or this guy was touching me. He will lose it because mm -hmm. his instinct is I have to protect her at all costs. So you look for those three things in a combination, profess, provide, and protect. Now, just to clarify, you're not saying that, you're not saying to the young men out there or the young ladies that if your man hasn't bought you a ring or proposed to you, He's not in love with you, right? You're not saying no. that. Okay, just want to clarify. Is he providing? You're good guys. You're good guys. <laughs> is don't, he don't providing stress. for you? Mm -hmm. Is he trying to pick up your meals? Is yeah. he trying to buy you a tea? I've seen you show up at work with a coffee for our friend, yeah. right? Yeah. So you try. So I'm providing. You're, you're, provi you're doing. What I don't you have a ring yet, but where you can, and that's what men who mm -hmm. are in love do. Mm -hmm. They take. And the problem is that girls keep thinking that these guys who are just playing with them yeah. are all men, and then mm -hmm. they end up in deep relationships, having children with men mm -hmm. who don't, they're who aren't in love with them. And then they're putting that stamp and saying, all guys are bad. Guys, men are incredibly loving creatures. If your man is not incredibly loving, it's because you're not the one for him. Wow. And I promise, like, if you just trust that God has somebody for you and you are comfortable to leave that situation, you will find somebody who will give you everything, those three Ps, he'll mm -hmm. give them to you.